Boom. What's up, guys? Let's talk about error handling in Rust. So, first of all, there's two different types of errors inside of Rust. There's what is known as recoverable errors, and these are essentially errors like trying to access a file type that doesn't exist. And then there's unrecoverable errors. And these unrecoverable errors, these are the actual bugs. So for example, like trying to access a location beyond the end of an array. So when these happen, we basically want to immediately stop the program. One thing to note, most languages don't distinguish between these two different types of errors, and you'd basically be handling them both in the same way. You guys might even be familiar with things like writing exceptions. Rust does not have exceptions, but what Rust does have is the result type for recoverable errors and the panic macro that stops execution when a program encounters an uncoverable error and see what that looks like. So first and foremost, let's just try to call the panic macro and just see what happens when we run the program. And how do you do that? Well, you're gonna have to type panic, P-A-N-I-C, and then since it's a macro, you want that exclamation mark. It'll take a string for a message. You can just say, help me, oh my God. Let's run that. And as you can see in the output, it did have first my print line macro. And then right here, it says thread main panicked at help. There's our panic message. Something else to know about this, there's two different ways to cause a panic in your Rust program. The first one is by taking an action, like I talked about earlier, like a bug and that's going to cause the code to panic. So for example, like I had also mentioned earlier, accessing an array beyond the endpoint. And you can also obviously explicitly call the panic macro. Either way, you're causing a quote unquote panic in the program. And by default, these panics are going to print a failure message on a wind and then clean up the stack and quit. And if you really wanted to with an environment variable, you can also have Rust display the call stack when a panic occurs. And that's just to make it easier to track down the source of the panic itself. So let's look at another example to see what it's like when a panic call comes from a library because of an actual bug in the code. And that bug in the code is going to call the macro directly instead of us just going ahead and hard coding it like we did on line nine over here. And if for the third time, if you guys remember the example I said earlier about accessing an array beyond the actual endpoint, let's do something like that. Let's forcibly do something like that to cause a panic on its own. Ooh, but let's be super cool. And let's just make a vector instead. So I'll say let V for vector equal VEC. And we'll just shove in there one, two, three. All right, boom. Now we have a vector with the name of V. And let's just try to access 99, which we know is not in there. Let's do cargo run. Actually, friends, actually forgot the exclamation after the VEC. So let's see what it looks like. Let's go cargo run. And oh my gosh, panicked. No, it panicked. At index out of bounds, length is three, but the index X is 99. Well, boom, there you go. If you guys can clearly see, we're trying to access the 100th element of a vector, which is at index 99, because you guys know indexing starts at zero anyway. But how many elements does this vector have? Well, it's got three, so impossibility. And in this case, Rust will panic. And there are a few other things that you can do with panic, but I think if you can understand how to use it and where it's going to happen anyway, then you can go ahead and put two and two together, my friends, or do whatever you want. That's when dealing with unrecoverable errors in Rust. Now, what about those recoverable errors using the result type that I mentioned earlier on the video? Most errors, as we know, probably aren't going to be serious enough to require the program to just stop everything it's doing entirely. Sometimes when a function fails. It's for a reason that you can easily interpret and respond to and maybe easy enough for the user to interpret. So like that example I mentioned earlier about opening a file and the operation fails because hey, the file just doesn't exist. Maybe you might just want to create the file instead of terminating the process entirely. So what would it look like making a result? Well, all right, and this is exactly what that would look like. Kind of like a try catch clause. You have your okay up there on line seven, checks the file, the file is all good, then no problem, right? And then on line eight, if there's an error, well, it's going to give us that panic and toss out the error.